I'm Deep Mahaman and you're watching the Redman TV. Hi, I'm Jay Gordon from Antioch. Just thinking back to 2007 when Phil Neville handball, what would have been a short goal in the derby? Do you think back on that and wonder what might have happened if, if it hadn't? I mean, that would have been some goal. Yeah, well, I think uh, that goal just showed me how difficult my life would be in Liverpool. <laughs> uh, so my first derby, my first game in, in the Premier League, and coming on to replace Stevie, and nobody knew what uh, Rafa was doing, to be honest. But uh, yeah, it would be, would be better if the, the, the goal was in, but we won the derby, third scored the penalty, so... I think uh, even not scoring, I'm, you know, I'm already on a, on a part of the history of uh, of derby, so it just makes me happy. And if you can say, I'm Dave on Sheffield and Phil away. Um, I'm just wondering, when you get a long-term injury like what you got last season, how difficult is it, like mentally, dealing with that, and what you do to keep yourself busy and keep your spirits up, and then obviously you come back. And pick up another injury, you know, how difficult it is. Yeah, well, um, I spoke with a Brazilian website uh, and I've said that it's been the worst period of my career because I never had the experience of injuries. So uh, the, in the knee injury was, was bad because, you know, it's a long term injury and I had to recover it for seven, eight months. But uh, it's been worse the, the, the other one because just got so close to the knee and I was feeling well and feeling fit and just, uh, you know, have to, to wait again and start an another rehab. So it's been very difficult. I think the second one has been worse. But uh, as I said, it's just uh, try to, 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 be, to be positive. There's nothing you can do and try to, to get right now again and don't rush. And, and just uh, you know, be with the family and try to 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 be strong. I think is the is the main thing to be strong and be positive and 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 don't rush. I think it's important to just to get back when I really feel I'm able to to play 100. percent Yeah. And I I think yeah, you're right. And it's all about difficulties difficulties you've had in the middle since you arrived, etc. etc. Et it's been a bit of a journey. I mean, that, you know, I was crying for you to be in the team, unfortunately you're injured, but I remember <coughs> in 2007, the full nil nil draw. When I remember as well. Yeah. And going from there to where you are now, between that period, was there ever a point where you thought maybe your time at the club was coming to an end? Yeah, not, not only that time, many times. I thought maybe my, my life here was finished. And, uh, but I always felt... Uh, something different that uh, you know uh, just told me to keep going and keep uh, trying to you know to change the opinions and and i think uh, you know people start to to realize uh, the, the work that i was putting on the on the on the games and maybe it was not working the way that i want and the way you want it as well but uh, as soon as you people start to to realize that I was trying everything I could in that period, uh, maybe they, you started to give me more credit, and uh, that's when I felt uh, you know everything was changing and, uh, and and in a difficult moment as well of the club. So uh, it's a different situation today, and, uh, and I'm just trying to to enjoy it and and keep keep doing exactly the same that I used to do. Maybe. Sometimes it won't work the same way that you want, that you expect. But just, uh, you know, as I said, some, something I, I used to feel that uh, told me that I should, I should stay and I should, you know, keep fighting for, for my place and, and to, to change the, the opinion as well. Thanks. Jimmy in your early days at Liverpool, which seems more daunting or more inspiring to have um, players like Steven Gerrard, Javi Alonso, Javier Mascherano also playing in your role, and who of those three has helped you out the most and had the biggest influence on you? I 
think so. It was a privilege to have these players to train every day and watching uh, every day. Uh, so that's why on my period when I was not getting too many games, I just had to to watch them and, and, and try to not copy, but uh, you know, have the same way they they play. Everybody's different, but uh, I think I learned a lot and. Uh, it was very positive to have them around, and I still have, you know, Stevie around. So it's always you. You can improve, and even when you get uh, like 30, 32 years old, you still can improve. And uh, that's what we we can see in a few older players. That uh, if you are open to to learn and listen, I think you the big chance you have to 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 get a better play. And my name is Rad, I'm from FC Poland. Come. Uh, look, as a short, big fighting spirit for, since you became uh, a Liverpool player. As my colleague mentioned, there were lots of doubts, but the, the people are crying to, to, to get to the team. Uh, is it a, a way that you've been grown up in Brazil, when your parents grown, grown you up, to, to fight for your place? Uh, there is an expression in Brazil that we say we are Brazilian, we never give up. And uh, I, I think I followed uh, very well that because, uh, as I said, it was hard for me when I when I came, a young a young boy uh, had no idea about uh, Premier League, the way the football was was here, and you know the the culture and the the city. So everything was a big change for me, and. Uh, as I said, that that period just uh, just uh, made me stronger and made me realize uh, where I was, and uh, that's why I'm sure every day of my life I just try to to give my best here on this club because I really know how big this club is and, uh, and how much uh, people from outside from the club and and the, the supporters expect from you and. Uh, from me, so uh, just uh, as I said, that period just made me stronger, and uh, I don't think anything can can be worse now. And I think I can handle with anything that can happen. And, and the injury is one of the reasons that I think I, I handle really well. And um, Paul Mitchell, Redman TV. Lucas, obviously it's been covered earlier. Um, you perhaps struggled in your in your early seasons at Liverpool. When you see young players now coming into the squad, um, the likes of maybe Jordan Henderson or John Joe Shelby, um, do you feel you're now in a position to be able to offer them advice on how to how to maybe make it at Liverpool to get through the, the hard times to make themselves a success? I think so. As I said, uh, when you play for Liverpool, the expectation is very high. It doesn't matter if you are 18 or 32 or 35. So I see some criticism about few young players and sometimes I just feel it's a, a bit unfair because if you are young you you be you have up and downs and you know that's when you become top player and you when you have consistency and nobody will be a top player with 18 20 is maybe a few that you can say that but normally when you get older and you know you get more experience so I just try to, to be around and, and, and tell them what I've been through uh, here when I came and uh, especially for the players, you know, are having a bit of criticism, I think it's important and, uh, you know, we have now a lot of young players coming in and, and doing well but at some point they will play bad, uh, that's normal and uh, we just have to, to, to respect and, and you as a fan, uh, supporters, instead of put them down, just try to cheer them up and give confidence because confidence is the, I think is maybe 50 or 60 percent of the game. So if you have confidence, you you try more and you take the risk more. So I think it's important. Fantastic. And can I just ask him um, if you could sign any member of the current Brazilian squad for Liverpool, who would it be? At the moment, uh, I would sign two, uh, Neymar, and Thiago Silva. For me, Thiago Silva is the best uh, centre back in the world for me. And uh, Neymar is, you know, he's already proving himself in Brazil. But I'm, I'm sure he'll, he'll be coming for an Europe very soon. But I don't think they will be very cheap. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Lucas.
jump in from the Red Bull over the line, the fanzine. Um, slightly different. I've been to the Maracanã three times to watch football, um, a long while ago now. And the atmosphere there was frightening, um, but sometimes exciting and sometimes funny. Um, what's it like to play there in a game against somebody like Argentina or Uruguay? And how would the fans there react to um, a poor performance? Um, I never had the chance to play against Argentina in Maracana. I've played a few times uh, when I was at Grêmio. Um, but uh, the culture, the Brazilian supporters are, are, are hard. If you, if you don't win, it uh, doesn't matter who you are. They just uh, literally boo you or just put you down. And uh, it happens for every single team and for the national team as well. So it's going to be a very, a very hard World Cup for, for the national team because they don't expect anything less than win. And we, don't, and we know how difficult it is to win a World Cup. So, um, as I said, it's just uh, when you are young, uh, developing in Brazil, you just get used to with this. And uh, especially in the academy and under 16, 17, you already have this pressure. When you have a derby or something similar, you, you just have to win. And uh, I think sometimes, as I said, it's unfair because when you are young, you, you, know, you have up and downs, but at the same time, Point. I think it's just make you stronger, and maybe you know in the future you can you can handle better with the pressure. And just a, one final question then, which probably everybody gets asked if they're from Brazil. Which did you see as their greatest team? Greatest team, the eleven. <laughs> the international sides. You mean Brazil only? Uh, the Brazilian national teams that's yeah. won the World Cups, the 58s and the 70s. I think 70s. I think 70s. The, yeah, the national team was. Seven. I had. I didn't have a chance to watch, but uh, uh, watching some videos and some goals, and uh, I think it was good. Everybody speaks about uh, 82 that lost the the, the World Cup, but uh, they used to play in an amazing way. And unfortunately, when you don't win. Uh, people don't don't respect you uh, as much as if you win. So, uh, but Brazil had uh, different teams. Like '94, it was I was I, I can remember because I was seven, and uh, it was not like a, a team <laughs> quite young. <laughs> I was not, it was not a team that uh, used to play with you know with uh, like Spain today with a lot of passes. But we had. Uh, <coughs> Two different class strikers, and uh, and I think it made it made the difference. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, this is Paul. I'm from uh, AnfieldFM.co.uk, which is a, an internet radio station for Liverpool supporters all over the world. How many people live in Brazil? <laughs> wow, <laughs> about <laughs> uh, about I think it's 190 million. <laughs> yeah, about. 289 of them listened to our station last, last month. <laughs> <laughs> Could you say something in Brazilian for us, please, to our listeners? In Portuguese, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they understand in English. Dizer que, para eles seguirem escutando a rádio, dizer que o Liverpool tem cada vez crescido mais no Brasil e na América do Sul e. E é, e é legal estar tá, tá sabendo que alguns torcedores do Liverpool estão acompanhando a rádio e you don't understand anything. Estão <risos> acompanhando a rádio e, e querendo saber mais um pouco sobre o clube. E, e é isso que eu espero poder levar também aos torcedores brasileiros. Thank you. You were very much liked by the supporters, and you, you've obviously improved your performance. Where in your trophy cabinet or in your house does the golden samba sit, which is lads off the battle form presented for you? Where I put it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what does it mean to you, if anything? It means a lot. Uh, as I said, uh, it just was the 
the trophy that showed me I've changed the opinion of uh, most of people. Uh, so uh, it's it's a, in a nice place where I can see very often. And uh, yeah, as I said, it, it was hard to. I never imagined that I could uh, be voted, and uh, so it was just you know. Uh, just something to show me that uh, my hard work was was being noticed. Was, yeah, was being noticed. And uh, unfortunately, when I got the injury, I felt my hard work was even more appreciated. But uh, that's unfortunately. But uh, I think it's the truth. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ray Hughes, the Merseyside branch of the supporters club. Um, the club have had a lot of injuries this season. And the manager probably wasn't as successful in the transfer market as he would have liked to have been. Um, as a consequence, he's had to play a lot of younger players. So, do you think the, the cloud has a silver lining for the club benefit from this long term? I think so. I think, uh, you know, I was reading an interview from Brendan and he said all the managers want more players and more signing. And uh, I think. Uh, we know it's been a, a difficult moment for us, and uh, because we maybe we didn't sign too much, too many big players. That's an opportunity for the young players, and maybe I was speaking with Suso and Pacheco a few a few weeks ago. I said I said to them, I, I never felt the club has been so open for young players since I came in. So I said, just is an opportunity to them to show. Because we know how difficult it is to play for this club, and uh, and, and I feel the supporters like it. They, they like the young players coming from academy. You know, they it's just you know they the fans love to see young players. the young players because you know you have the Stevies and Caragas. Mm -hmm. So I think the fans were expecting more young players coming. From the academy often uh, more regular but uh, that's the time now when brendan likes to to give the, the, the chance so i think will be will be will be positive in the future because these players will just get better and if they are doing well now can you imagine in a few years time so it's just yeah. i think will be very good yes yeah. yeah, thanks thank you hi this is Hi. Sarah Dean from red and white cop on the website um, you've been here for five years now, yeah. um, and we've seen you grow and mature as a player, as you've discussed, and you've had your highs and your lows. Of the kids coming through now, are there any that remind you of yourself at that age? You mean the difficult moments? Oh, just the kind of personality, the, the struggles that they're going through. Oh, it's something you look at them and you go, that was me a few years ago. No, I don't. I don't see anyone. It's different histories. Like uh, we can we can mention Jonjo that uh, was playing very well and had a, that bad tackle. And I just remember when I got sent off against Everton and cost us the FA <laughs> Cup. Uh, so it just you know, uh, just uh, it's just similar things that can happen. And, and as I said, the age. Uh, just if you get older, it just get you know just helps you to get more experience. But uh, everyone will have uh, will have their own history. Maybe a few won't have the the bad moments, and uh, I just hope then they can cope well with the pressure and, and improve as a as a player. And as I said, we have a lot of players coming to, into the team, and uh, I just you know as a as a as a team, we just have to try to protect these players and give them confidence to to keep improving. Yeah. Okay, Nada. Hi, Lucas. Uh, David Law from KCC Live. And um, do you ever think about the big picture of Liverpool in terms of the type of aspirations and um, the Champions League football in the future, and especially your own personal legacy? And um, do you ever use that as a motivation? And um, do you see that happening under under Brendan? I think so. It's what we have uh, as a target. We know uh, the the club is is going through, you know, uh, a difficult moment and a, a period that uh, a lot of change has been done. So uh, we know how difficult it is to build a team. But 
I can see that uh, you know the way we are working and the way Brenda likes to 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 work. I think uh, we only get better and improve as a team. And uh, I can see we have we ha we are having a successful years uh, in years come. Yeah, and finally, um, I'm sure our listeners would love to know what, what music you're currently listening to. Have you got any favourite songs at the moment? Maybe Gangnam Style? <laughs> <laughs> no, not Gangnam Style, no. I, watch, uh, I listen a lot of Brazilian music. And I've been uh, all the time in the gym, so the players used to put, uh, they always put uh, some English music or American. So even if you don't like, you you just learn them and, and, and just don't get out of your head. So no, I don't have a one favorite one. Probably will be one Brazilian one. So that's it. Yeah. Okay.